As a full-time graphic designer, I understand that we wear many hats. Not only have to post on social media every day, but we also have to answer to emails and manage clients and manage our finances and the list goes on and on and on. And staying organized is one of the most important things that you can do to maintain your mental health. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you all my top favorite tools that I use to stay organized in my graphic design business. And no, this is not gonna be a list of 20 different things that you need to pay for. Most of the platforms that I use are free, and that is mostly because I don't wanna pay for lots of subscriptions, but also the more programs and platforms that I have or that I've tried, just overwhelms me. So I like to stick to what works in my business and what I have found the most success from. So I'll be going over not only how I stay organized with my schedule, but my social media and my client files. So let's jump right into it. The number one first tool that I use almost daily is Google Calendar and Google Drive. I love Google Calendar for time blocking my schedule. It helps me organize my day and not only that, but my months ahead of time. So I'm able to access this on my phone, on my iPad, on my computer, and I pretty much have no excuse to miss a meeting or to not know what's going on in the next few weeks of my life. So I use Google Calendar for literally every part of my life, my personal life, my business, my clients and my appointments and all the things. So with my Google Calendar, I'm able to actually organize it by labeling all the different parts of my life in different colors, which has helped me stay very organized. And I, like I mentioned, I love time blocking. So I like to set aside about an hour for client work, an hour for maybe some personal things or another hour for client work and typically like two to three hours for content creation. And I also do have some days of the week that I completely dedicate to content creation and editing. And I'm telling you guys right now, I would not be able to stay on a schedule like that if it was not for having my Google Calendar that keeps me super organized. And I can't even tell you the amount of times that I am in the middle of something and maybe I just get in the zone or I'm in a flow state or maybe I accidentally forgot about something. There's literally no excuse because my Google Calendar reminds me. You can set a reminder for 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before, 20 minutes before, an hour before, however many reminders that you need for yourself. You can set that up on Google Calendar so I don't miss anything. I do pay for a Google Workspace because I wanted my business email to be within the Google ecosystem. I've just found that I really enjoy using Google Drive, Google Sheets, all the things. So I wanted to keep my email within that. Although my website platform does come with an email, it just seemed easier for me to have everything under one ecosystem. So I did want to mention that that is something I do pay for, but I believe if you just do one email, it's around like $5 per month. So it's not su too super crazy. Also within the Google ecosystem, I do use Google Drive for delivering all of my client files. I used to use Dropbox, but I did not love how Dropbox felt like a separate entity. Like I mentioned, I like to kind of keep things within a similar ecosystem, whether it's like the Adobe ecosystem or the Google ecosystem. I felt that I was way more organized when I was able to access my Google Drive and my email and everything in one place. So that's where I send all my clients' project files, whether that's branding or website. I typically like to create folders for each of my clients and I will add different subfolders within there for their photos, um, for their text, for the website. Um, it really helps to stay organized within Google Drive to collect all the things that I need for the website design. But not only that, when it comes to the branding, I'm able to add all the different file types for the logos, all of the font files that maybe they need to have, the color palette, everything. I have it all organized in subfolders within my Google Drive. Now on the topic of files and storing my files, I also use iCloud Drive. So this is the Apple ecosystem now, but I always use iCloud Drive because I'm able to back up all of my client files, and not only that, but all of my YouTube videos, all of my social media posts, all of the important documents and files that I need in my business. 
and literally everything you can think of, I store it within my iCloud Drive. And I have this process right now, which I'm happy to make another video on like file management, but my process is to have everything in my iCloud Drive, and then at the end of the year, I start to transfer that over to my hard drive, which my hard drive is two terabytes, so, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to the point where it's full. I might because YouTube videos are pretty hefty with file sizing, um, but I like to, at the end of the year, transfer that over to the hard drive and start fresh with my iCloud drive because I do not wanna have to add on every single year more additional subscription for more storage, so I like to just shift it over to my hard drive. But in the meantime, on the day-to-day -day when I'm working, I love iCloud drive because Everything I save on my laptop, I'm able to access it on my desktop and vice versa. So that makes it super easy and really nice and um, I don't have to worry about losing anything. So that's always awesome. Okay, now moving into project management. This is how I stay organized with my like client facing relationships and also my like workflows and kind of the back end things of how I run my business. And this is Dubs Auto. I did launch a course last year called Dubs Auto Decoded where I teach you all about how to use Dubs Auto because I know it's a complicated platform. If you're jumping into it kind of blind and you don't know how to use it, I highly recommend checking out that course because I show you how to set up your workflows. I give you some canned emails that you can use and just plug in um, so you don't have to write a million emails because I know how much time that takes. Um, and I also give you tons of tips on how to have a really great client experience. So Dubsado is my holy grail. I use it every single day in my business. Typically my day to day, I will log in there and see my in process clients. And I also will see the clients that are new to make sure that they are booking a call with me or that they got the proposal and that I'm following up with the proposal. So pretty much everything that my business is doing roots from Dubsado and I love it because I don't have to worry about constantly following up with clients. I have workflow set up so it automatically reminds them for me and that also goes with the payments because when we're wearing all these hats in our business we don't want to have to worry about calling our clients and texting our clients and bothering them to make a payment and I just have these automated reminders that takes a huge weight off my back and I never miss any sort of payment or any sort of client that walks through the door because they're always getting a message from me. So I love it. It helps me stay organized. And if I could shout it from the mountaintop that you need to have some sort of like CRM system, if you're really getting into the flow of things in your business, then I would because it's so helpful and I've loved having it. And this is probably my third or fourth year that I've had Dubs Auto and I wouldn't want it any other way. The next tool that I have mentioned many times and made many videos on is Figma. So you might be wondering how is Figma like an organization tool, but it is because this is where all of my website design mockups are held and they take place here. So I don't have to save these on my computer. It's a cloud-based program. So every single thing that revolves around website designs is in my Figma accounts and it just keeps everything super organized in there for me. I'm able to go access all of my previous clients projects um, and this is only because I do pay for Figma so I do pay monthly and it allows me to have multiple different projects within there but I do like to save those projects at least so I can like maybe take certain elements and add it to other client projects and just if I need to reference it at all for the future, it's super helpful to have them like stored in there. So I love Figma for that, but not only for website design, Figma is a really awesome place to brain dump if you want to create a fig jam, which is a really awesome little board where you can lay out all your ideas and just like I said, brain dump everything on your mind check out Fig Jam. It'll organize everything for you. There's really fun tools to add like sticky notes and stuff. So if I ever feel like I need like a brain dumping session, I go onto Fig Jam and I just create kind of like a web and a map of everything on my mind because I feel like I have lots of ideas and I don't want to lose those ideas. So I go and add them on Fig Jam and I can always look back on it when I am ready to bring those ideas to life. So I love Figma for many reasons. 
Um, and those are just some of them. All right, I saved the big one for the end. This is something I've been wanting to share with you guys and really kind of show you how I use it. And that is Airtable. I know I'm one of the many few that do not use Notion. I have tried it, um, but I find it really complicated. I don't know why, I just find it such a learning curve. Um, but I did not feel that way with Airtable. So let me just start by saying if you're using Notion, if you're using a different program and it's working for you, stick with that. I'm not trying to persuade you to go try something new, um, but I wanted to share with you why I like Airtable for like specifically social media planning and also for like my my own personal kind of like marketing plans. So I, I say that because I know how overwhelming it can be to go try all the platforms out there and it can be really tempting to go try them, but I have found when I do that with myself, it's kind of a waste of time because I always go back to what I'm comfortable with and I'm comfortable with Airtable. So I wanted to show you guys kind of a behind the scenes of what my Airtable looks like and how I use it for social media. And specifically this year, I have found myself using it a lot, um, especially for like my YouTube video planning. And it's been helping me so much with like creating an outline for the video and also like knowing which topics I wanna post about because I had a list going on my phone, like on my notes on my phone of all the videos I wanna create, but I just put it pretty much put them into my Airtable and I was able to drag them on those specific dates of the month so that's always super helpful i always know what i'm filming on what days so i don't have to question it so i'm recording my screen so i can show you guys how i use Airtable. um i'm going to just show you my actual one that i'm using right now for like my marketing and my content planning um so i do have a table right here that is a weekly task list this is basically if i wanted to add something like so typically i will write my task list on a notepad However, I feel that when I'm, if I get up from my desk and I go work at a coffee shop or maybe I'm visiting home for the, a week or something, I like to be able to access my task list, at least for like the past few weeks, um, anywhere that I go. So I like to add it, add it in here now. And I also can add like dates if I want to. So it's really, really nice for that. Um, but I'll just kind of show you guys like how you could even add a table completely from scratch. All you would do is hit this like plus sign here and I don't pay for Airtable. This is actually the free version. So I have limited options, but it pretty much has everything I need and I, I don't feel the need to go subscribe to it. Show you my YouTube tab because this is the tab or the table that I go to a lot. Every single week I go to this tab because I want to know which podcast I'm filming, which YouTube video that I have planned and it's super helpful. And as you can see right here on the right hand side, I have all of my ideas. So if I'm ever stuck and I don't know what to film about, I can just drag one of these ideas onto that day. And it just, for mental clarity, it's so helpful. Um, so I do have my podcast episodes in here as well, um, but this is how I do it. I have basically the next few weeks planned out and I have all these ideas so I can drag them in there and I know what to post about. So this is my YouTube table. You can also go to these different views. So if I go to videos to do, it'll tell me which videos I have not filmed yet. So that's pretty nice as well because if I, if I were to go to this video idea list, there might be some in there that I've already posted about. But if I were to just change the status to posted or filmed and I need to edit it, then I'm able to really clearly see which ones I still have to create. So that's really helpful as well. And then my brain, my brain dump uh, view is basically just putting out all my ideas of videos that I would like to film. And I do change that status to idea. So I love how, um, Airtable has these status options because you can edit the field and you can add in any of the options that you want. So if I wanted to delete idea or maybe rename it or change the color, I can do that in here. So it's one of the reasons I kind of really like Airtable. I just, I find it similar to like Google Sheets and it's just more intuitive to me. Maybe everyone's different. So that's why I said, I'm not trying to persuade you to like switch to this, whatever works for you. But that is one of the things I really love about it. And then let's go to the social media content plan table. So I actually have um, a lot of things in here. 
Let's go to the post schedule first. That'll make more sense. So before my social media manager came in, this is how I was kind of organizing my posts of the week. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I was able to kind of understand which videos to film for social media as well and like when to post those. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I am not, I'm not the greatest at sticking to this. Like if I have something I want to post or talk about, I'm going to do that. Like that's going to take hierarchy than this schedule here, but this is mainly to help me if I ever feel stuck or if I ever just don't know what to film about because sometimes I do run into that. Sometimes I'm just blank in my brain and I just go here and I'm like, okay, let's make a graphic design tip video or let's do like a trending audio and keep it a little easier this time. So this is really helpful and you can also view it in a grid or a gallery. So there's different views. And as you can see right down here, you can change the view. If I wanted to do a Kanban view, I could do that, which I'll show you what that looks like. We can change it to status or post. Um, let's do status. And then you could like drag whichever one. So Kanban is a little bit different. It wouldn't quite work for this kind of post schedule, but as you can see, there's lots of different views that you could create. And then when I was really active on Pinterest, I was doing a whole Pinterest table of like all the keywords to add and everything. And then I also have an email list where I write all my email ideas. And then we have a bunch of other things in here. I added this table recently because there's a lot of portfolio pieces I haven't added to my website. And honestly, like, so many clients that I get to work with that I kind of forget which ones I haven't posted yet. So I made a table, just like kind of a task list of items that I need to add to my website. So yeah, that keeps it really organized and really easy. I would say that the YouTube view and my social media view is the ones that I use the most often, but it's just like peace of mind knowing that all my ideas are in one place that I'm able to go in there and know everything that I'm going to be putting out there is super helpful. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a little tour of my Airtable. It's a really quick tour, but if you want like a full video on Airtable, I'm happy to make it. I'm currently taking a course on Airtable to learn a little more about how to use it properly, but it's been working for me and I really do enjoy it. So I wanted to show you guys how I use it. To you guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this video of all the things I use in my graphic design business to stay organized. Like I said, we wear many hats in our business. So making sure that everything's organized, all your ideas have somewhere to live so you're not forgetting anything is really important. Um, I've noticed a huge difference in my mental health, my mental clarity, and just overall, feeling like I actually have a life outside of my business because that's also important. So this always helps to keep it organized. Definitely go check out my Dubsado course if you really want to get that set up in your business. Can't recommend it enough. That's one of the things that really saves me a lot of time. So yeah, I really hope this was helpful. If it was, I would appreciate it so much if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one.